All right, we begin with our accounting class. Chapter one is, first we begin with accounting principles. The textbook is by these three guys, Wagen, Kiesel, and Kimmel. Okay, and let's try and get everyone focused, right? We get uh, started and we just begin with chapter one. And chapter one is accounting in action. Yeah. We still have all the people who can't get started, right? Everyone, okay? So, what are we trying to accomplish today and probably next time? Because today it's probably not going to be enough to complete the whole chapter. So, we're trying, number one, to explain what accounting is. This is number one over here. Then, the next step is to explain who the users are of accounting. In other words, what is accounting, who uses it, and how it is used, okay? Then, in accounting, there is a concept called ethics. What is ethics? What ethics means? Is it, why is it used? What's the problem? Hello. Class begin already, okay? Okay? We're now in class. After that, you can talk. So, we're trying to see number three. What is ethics, okay? So what ethics means. Then number four is about generally accepted accounting principles. So all of these are topics we'll be covering today. We'll be covering what is a monetary unit. So I'll be explaining what monetary means, what unit means, how it's used, and so on. Then we get to some real accounting like the accounting equation. We will explain, or I'll be explaining what is assets, what is liabilities, so now we have to move somewhere else, okay? Okay? I'll be explaining what is assets, what is liabilities, and what is owner's <coughs> equity. Owner's equity is the same as capital, capital. So I'll be explaining what capital means. And then we're going to have some business transactions. What is a business transaction, how it works, and so on. And finally, we go through the four financial statements. Probably not today, probably next time. It's too much to cover in one lecture. Okay, so we have five sections. Section number one is what is accounting, and it covers the three primary activities of accounting, and who uses accounting data, who are the users. Okay. The next one is about the building blocks of accounting, what is ethics, and what are generally accepted accounting principles. And then we get to the foundation of accounting, which is the basic it's assets, liabilities, and owner's equity in the form of a formula, which I'll be. Okay? You might be the next one, okay? Assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Then we're going to do some basic transactions. We're going to do transactions with the accounting equations. In other words, you open business, you invest in the business, purchase machine, equipment, whatever that might be, and how it's done. And the last piece is financial statements. You need to understand which are the four major financial statements, how you prepare them, how you use them, how you read them, okay? So it is a very long and difficult chapter, which will go slowly step by step. Okay, so section number one is what is accounting? This is the same as 
definition. So, in accounting, we first say what is the purpose of accounting. And the purpose of accounting is, you see, three things. Number one, identify. Number two, report and communicate economic events. So, it's about specific business. And when you have a business, you have things going on. The typical things going on is revenues or money coming in and expenses going out. So you want to see how the business is doing and that's the purpose of accounting. The purpose of accounting is to show you how the business is doing. And here's the key, by identifying, recording, in communicating, let's call it the important stuff, the important things, okay? And it does this of a specific organization. When we say organization, we mean a particular unit. So, one little business can be a unit. A big hotel can be a unit. It could be a big chain, chain like Tesco. We all go shopping to Tesco, so Tesco is a big chain, okay? It could be an airline. It could be a big government, okay? So for each particular unit, you can set up accounting. And that unit we call organization. Most common, it will be a business. Usually, we divide organizations into two or three groups. Organization will be business, and business means to make money, working for profit. The second one is called non-profit. Examples, maybe some universities or foundations, they don't work for profit, okay? And number three, government. For example, police. At least they don't work for profit, okay? Uh, government, maybe museum or art, they don't work for profit, okay? So, you have for-profit business, non-profit business, and government. Government accounting a little bit different. We don't study government accounting here. Here, we focus on business, okay? Because business is 99% of what's going on around the world, okay? Uh, in terms of, we call these now business units. So the most common organization is business. And finally, accounting is, once you do the accounting, which is something like documents, I already mentioned, for financial statements, someone is using them. We call these interested users. I'll be explaining a little bit more. All users we divide in two categories. One is called internal users. Internal users are people from inside the business, like the managers, other employees, and they use the accounting for internal purposes, usually to make decisions, usually for management purposes. And then you have external users, and I'll be explaining a lot more in a couple of slides. Okay, well, these are the three primary activities. Let's read them. Identify, record, communicate. Now, this is a picture for like little children. This shows you identify. Identify means select the economic events. When we say event, it's the same as transaction, okay? So you choose, we record this, we don't record that. You got a business, a business, the chair is broken. You have to choose, do we record broken chair or not, okay? You got a business, uh, you buy a new computer, you choose. Do we record new computers? So, choosing 
to buy or not to choose is the same as select, okay? Choosing, selecting whether to record or not to record the transaction, that's the identification. The next one is you actually record it, okay? So you put it in the books, that's what we say, books. But today, the books are usually notebooks, right? Usually it's done in a computer accounting system. It's done in a software. Uh, yeah, I still see here occasionally businesses, they'll just use pen and paper and write everything on paper, but most businesses will use, modern businesses will use software, a computer accounting software. Usually software is going to be international and they all change the label according to the different language. Chinese or Thai language or Japanese or English or whatever. And the final part is communication. Communication means it tells whoever is interested, whoever is interested in the accounting data will tell them, and here's what, the accounting reports. And accounting reports is the same as financial reports. Again, I already said there are four. We're going to spend at least 10, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes explaining these four. These are the most important. Of course, on your first exam, or sorry, the first quiz, you will be doing and preparing these statements. So what I will give you is, for the first quiz, very simple. I'll give you a number of economic events. You have to choose which to record, meaning you have to identify which to record. Then you have to record them. And in the final step, you have to prepare the accounting reports, okay? And that's basically what we will do. Uh -huh. Now we get to the <coughs> users. So who uses accounting data? These are the users. And as I already explained, the users we divide into internal and external. And here is on the red here the internal users. And here is external users. Is the camera able to show here? Does it see or not see? Yeah, maybe you need to zoom out a little, huh? Okay, so you show external and then you have internal. So, we begin with the internal users. Internal user number one is management. How many of you are taking management course with me? Only one? Oh, one, two, three, okay. So, I will be explaining who management is in the other course, but these are the people who run the company. Management comes from manage. These are the people who manage the company. And we divide them into top level management or top management, into the middle level management, and bottom or first line management. So all the people jointly who run, manage, and operate the company we call management. Next is human resources. Human resources is actually part of management. These are the people responsible for hiring people and firing people. The most common way for human resources to use accounting is to see if there is enough profit, if there is enough, we call it income, if there is enough cash, maybe to pay one more employee, to hire one more person, okay? Sometimes accounting, meaning business, is so bad in business running and loss that human resources say we need to fire two people, two people, you know, go away, okay? So human resources needs to understand the statements needs to understand the business. Number three, of course, is finance. Oh, finance 
needs a little explanation because it's difficult and tricky. I had a lot of students who graduate finance and when you ask them what is finance, they don't know. Okay, I, that, that happens a lot. And finance is simply the subject of managing money. Finance means money management, okay? And the different subjects of finance, the main, the primary one, which you study all is financial management. So that's finance, is in financial management, okay? But you also have public finance, managing the finance of government. Another important field is investments. You take money and then you make money. So how you invest in investments divided into stocks, bonds, real estate, currencies, and commodities. You'll study that later. So finance department is the department associated with managing money. Accounting is associated only with recording. Usually, most businesses in the world, most businesses will have one department called accounting and finance, okay? Here, in the university, there is no separate accounting and separate finance, no. They are merged as one. When I was working in a major corporation, and I explained in the previous class, it's called SBC Communications. SBC is a huge, like 40, 50,000 people working it. It is as big as McDonald's. So it's a huge corporation. Probably in the US, maybe 10 or 15. It's, it's called in the Dow Jones Index. And I work within the software division. And the software division is called, was called Sterling Commerce. We had 3,000 employees in the company in the software division, and accounting and finance had 100 people. 100 people, but it's accounting and finance together. No separate accounting, no separate finance, okay? Usually banks, financial institutions will separate accounting and finance. The next type of internal user is marketing. And marketing wants to know what's going on so that they know is this product selling is this product selling is this product making a profit well is the business making a profit so basically all major internal users all management inside the company needs to use accounting for their business for what they run and then you have external users. Main one, this is United States. United States IRS means Internal Revenue Service. This is basically government asking for taxes. So it's about paying taxes to the government. So the government wants to see are you making profit this year? What is the profit this year, okay, and to determine the taxes. So the one of the major external users is the government wanting to tax the business because the business runs for profit and usually has to pay taxes. The next one is investors. Investors are those people who put their own money into the business. The money which they put in the business is called capital. Capital, okay? So capital is a very, very, very difficult word in finance. And one of the difficulties comes from the fact that it has five completely different meanings. So it is not so much difficult as is confusing. So people don't understand what capital means. And capital means, the primary meaning is your own resources, usually money, because it could be time, okay? Your own resources that you put at risk. So 
you're risking your own money. When somebody is risking their own money, that money is called capital. Okay? So investors risk their own money, they risk their own capital, and they want to know the assets, the liabilities, the profits, they want to know, they want to read the accounting or the financial statements. Next one that wants to read the statements is the labor union. The labor, labor unions are, is an organization, a labor union, that represents employees, that represents the workers. You may have painters, those that paint, let's say, walls. You may have plumbers. You may have electricians. You may have art workers. They all want or they all have organization that represents them. Now, I understand here in Phuket, you got the taxi, taxi drivers, they have their own little organization, or at least the businesses have, maybe also the worker have, I don't know. Uh, so, workers have their own representation, they want to know how the business is doing. Well, the other, or well, the next, interesting party is creditor. Creditor means you give money on loan, okay? So creditor usually is the same as a lender. You lend money. You give them money. The most common type of lender is the bank. The bank lends money. The other, especially in Asia, most common type of lender is the family. Parents give lend money or a brother lends money or uncle or son. So usually creditor is someone who lends money, wants the money back and sometimes wants a little more. That little more we call interest. Okay. Interest is the additional money that you have to return. Example is, yeah, you guys may maybe buy an iPhone on credit. Yeah, on credit means you make payments, okay? An iPhone costs, I'm just making numbers, 25,000 bucks, okay? And you make six payments, 5,000 every month. So, six payments. 5,000 means you make a total payment of 6 times 5 is 30. The original price is 25. So you're paying 5,000 interest. Well, in this case, whoever sells you the mobile is giving you a credit for 25 in return for an interest of 5. That interest is going to be for him a credit. Finally, there was SEC, don't want to discuss this. This is the regulator of the exchange. An exchange is a place where stocks, bonds, and other financial instruments are traded. So you buy and sell stocks, and this is the regulator. The regulator wants to see if the financial statements are good or not good. And sometimes, customers, want to know if the company is good or not good. Example will be, customer wants to know, well, if I'm going to buy an IBM computer, is IBM going to be a good company in here next year to provide service or not? Same thing for a car. If you buy, let's say, a Korean car, Kia or Hyundai, is Kia going to be around? Is Hyundai going to be around. Same thing if you're buying a motorcycle, but you buy a Chinese motorcycle. Chinese is a little cheaper, right? So the question is, well, are they making profit and will they be around after one year? So sometimes customers also want to see if the business is doing okay. And these are the primary 
users, internal and external of the camera. Clear? Okay, move on. Okay, they're explaining us now in this slide that there are two broad groups which I already did. Okay, so if people are using accounting, okay, they ask questions, okay, and the question is, can we afford to give employees a pay raise? That's a simple question. Management and human resources asking, can we increase the salary? Make from 20,000, make it 25, okay? So that's one simple question. Can we increase salary, all right? Salary or pay is, salary is what you pay to workers for one month, for one week, okay? Another common question is, did the company earn? satisfactory income. This is simple terms. Did it make money or it didn't make money? Did it make, when we say satisfactory earn, income is the same as profit. Hey guys, okay? To, to earn income means also the same as to make profit. So to make money, to make profit, I will be explaining in coming later, uh, lectures in detail. Next one is, uh -huh. do we need to borrow in the near future? So they use it to decide if they will have enough cash or they will not have enough cash. If you have enough cash, good. If you don't have enough cash, you have to borrow. You go to the bank, you go to some other place, you borrow something, okay? Next one, uh-huh, is cash sufficient? Do we have enough cash to pay dividends to stockholders? So, stockholder is an investor. Stockholder is someone who owns stock. And stock is a piece of ownership. So if the company has 100 shares, that's how we call it, a share, okay? If you own one share, this means you own 1% of the company. So stockholder is the same as investor, same as investor. And when you invest in a business, you give money to the business. You expect business to give you money back. Well, when the investor gives money to the business, we call it investment. When the business give money or gives money back to the investor, we call it dividend, dividend. So dividend is a payment by a business to its investors. And these investors we call stockholders or shareholders, okay? That's, again, all what we'll be explaining in coming weeks. Another one is what price for our product will maximize net income? Now, keep in the camera a little bit so that, you know, right? Okay? So what price for our product. So that's a simple question. I mean, should we charge 200 or 300 or 400? Well, you can see in the statement say, well, we don't make enough profits, which means two things. You either reduce the cost, the expenses, or you have to increase the price, okay? There's nothing else. When a business cannot make profit, cannot make money, it has to lower cost or raise revenue or somehow do a little bit of both, okay? And the last one, will the company be able to pay its short-term debts? If you can't see on the back, you can see up, sit up here up front, okay? There's some chairs free here, okay? Oh yeah? So, in the statements, 
you want to know are if we borrowed some money before last year, do we have enough money to pay back the bank or we don't have enough money? Okay? So basically it all revolves, everything is about money, right? The most important thing in the world. Do we have enough money to pay more to workers? Do we have enough money to pay to our creditors? Do we have enough money to pay to the bank? Okay. Do we have enough money to pay to the investors? And if we don't have money enough, how much we need to borrow and for what kind of period? So these are all important questions. Whether it's a restaurant or a hotel or a fitness club, okay, or a football club. Doesn't matter what the business. It's all about money. Do we have enough? And if we don't, how much more we need? And they will now give you some users over here. All right. Human resources and investors I already explained and management I did in the finance department, okay, the marketing department. So creditors, so I already explained all of this stuff. Next piece. Discussion questions, I don't know, we're gonna discuss and Let's see, ethics. That's for us, or at least in our class, in our course, not as important, yeah? You need to pull up what is actually ethics, right? In the local Thai language. All right, but can anyone translate? Can you read it? What ethics means? Translate. Uh, Oh yeah? <laughs> I, I did not understand it. Okay, hopefully you did. Okay, I'll let me explain. So, what is ethics? Ethics is about right and wrong, okay? About good and about bad, okay? But ethics is different for different people. Ethics depends on culture, Ethics depends on religion. Ethics depends on sometimes men, women, okay? So ethics depends on morals, okay? And ethics determines what's right and what's wrong, okay? And that's what it says. It is a standard of conduct, okay? So standard, it tells you what's good and what's bad, by which actions are judged as right or wrong, okay? So, right or wrong. So, making more money, is it good? Well, usually yes, but is it right? Well, it depends. If I take a gun right at you and I say, give me your money and I steal your money, well, that's not right anymore, okay? And same thing about lying, okay? We, at least in the West, don't want to lie. We don't expect other people to lie to us. So for us, lying is wrong. Well, in accounting, businesses sometimes like or want to lie to the investors and to present and make the business, oh, our business is good, we're doing great, invest in us, okay? They also, businesses like to lie to the bank. When the business is in trouble, okay, they got big problems. They don't say, oh, we're in trouble, give us money. They don't do that, they lie. They say, oh, we're in good shape, we're doing great. We are expanding our business. We need five million, right? Give us money, all right? So when a business wants to get some money, they don't want to say, oh, 
we are in trouble, they say, no, we are doing great. So they use accounting to lie. Okay? Well, that's not simply wrong, but in many countries around the world, for sure, everywhere in the West, also in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in Japan, it is illegal, actually, not just wrong, it's illegal. You get in trouble with the law if you lie on account. Okay, so you got some scandals, meaning corporations, they lie, they lie, they lie, they take everybody's money, the bank's money, investors' money, and then they disappear, or they just steal them, okay? That happens everywhere around the world. Well, yeah, it happened a lot in Thailand in 1993, 94, 95, 96. There was, in 1997, the Asian financial crisis. Have you guys heard or studied about Asian financial crisis in 1997? Well, there was a big boom and lots of businesses and credit and investment and suddenly big crisis, government go bankrupt, most banks went bankrupt, okay? Most businesses went bankrupt, real estate a lot went bankrupt. Turned out that everybody was lying on their account, okay? So, it is important to understand that effective financial reporting, so, Good business usually is not lying about their account, okay? Well, now we're not going to be studying about ethics. We're going to say how you do accounting. Review question. We skip or don't skip. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got some excitement over there. All right? Ready to continue? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay, so we continue with the building blocks of account. Okay. And there is users, remember, internal, external, finance, accounting, marketing, government. They need and they use accounting and they use financial statements. I already mentioned there are four of them we'll discuss. Let's see which are these four. I'll be explaining more, maybe later today, maybe next time. First one is balance sheet. And balance sheet tells you everything that you own. Balance sheet. You own, we'll call these the assets. And the balance sheet tells you the liabilities. Liability is everything you owe to others, okay? I'll be explaining more about that. The next one is called the income statement. And sometimes income is the same as profit. An income statement is about revenue, and revenue is money coming in the business, and expenses, and expenses is money going out of the business. And the difference between money coming in and money going out is called the income, okay? And if you take all the money out, meaning all the expenses, we call it net income. And net income is the same as profit, okay? So profit is what it's all about, okay? So balance sheet will tell you things like, oh, the university has seven buildings. It has a gym, it has a stadium, it has three dorms, okay? It has, oh, four dorms for students, three dorms for faculty. It will tell you all. Oh, we have 1,000 computers, we have 300 projectors, okay? So the balance sheet will tell you the things that you have. Income statement will tell you, oh, we have 3,000 students, okay? Each paying 10,000 a year. This means we make a revenue of 3 million or 30 million, whatever it is, the number, 30 million. And then they say we make expenses. 
for electricity, for computers, for chairs, for professors, for salaries, uh, let's say 25 million. So revenue, 30 million. Expenses, 25 million. And the difference of 5 million we call income or net income or we just call it profit, okay? And this is the money that the university makes. Well, in this case, because it's a government university, it is not working to make money. It is not for profit institution, okay? So if it makes five million more, it's going to build a new building, okay? It's going to open a new gym. I don't know. It's going to do, or may, they may take the profit from all the other <coughs> branches, five branches, and invest and open branch number six, okay? So they will decide what to do with the money. Okay, and another explanation is the so-called generally accepted accounting principles. So principle means something that guides you, something that tells you what to do and how to do it. Oh, we are studying now principles of accounting. Studying principles of accounting means what is accounting, how it's done, and how it's done right. Okay, the correct way of doing it. So, you have accounting principles. Well, this is what we study. And these are generally accepted. Generally accepted means that most people agree that these are good, that these are right, and that we should use them this way, okay? So these generally accepted accounting principles are usually developed in the United States, and then they are accepted internationally. It's called international standards, okay? And what we study here is both generally accepted principles, which are mostly international. So they're good for Thailand, in Japan, in Bulgaria, in America, and any other country, okay? Asset is an asset everywhere, okay? Profit is pretty much profit everywhere, okay? So this is what we basically study. And here is the same explanation. The accounting profession, all accountants, they get together and develops a set of standards. Standards is the same as principles. And these standards are generally accepted. Means all of them agree they're good, they're right, we will use them, we will follow them. Uh, generally accepted principles for student is not to cheat on exam, right? Right? So it's a basic principle. You don't cheat on the exam. You don't lie on the exam. Okay? So here they got their own principles. Okay. Building blocks. Securities and Exchange Commission, this is only for the United States, no cover, okay? Just for America. So every country, every government has one institution which usually regulates the exchange, okay? The exchange where stocks, bonds, investors. In the US, it's this one. We're not gonna discuss this. In the United States, there's a standards board. It's called Financial Accounting Standards Board. It's pronounced as, in English, FASB. And FASB is the institution all accountants get together, they get their board, and the board decides the accounting principles. So they have written principles. What we use now is a textbook to learn and to study these principles. Okay? And you also have for internal accounting, that's not very interesting. Huh. One of the many principles. We're going to study many principles, maybe 10, maybe 15 different principles, okay? But one 
of the many principles in accounting is called the cost principle. Cost principle is very important. That's why we study in chapter one. Okay? That's why you know it's so early. And the cost principle is also known sometimes as historical cost or historical cost principles. And it simply says that when a company buys an asset, again, I'll be explaining asset is something of value. For example, a chair, a table, a computer, a laptop. You record it at its cost. So, if you pay 10,000 baht for it, you must say it's 10,000. You cannot say it's 9, and you cannot say it's 11. So, if you buy an asset, whatever price you pay, you must put the price you pay for an asset. It's called the cost. Okay? And you must put that cost for that. So, if you buy the chair for 100, you must write 100. Okay? If you buy the monitor for 5,000, you must put in 5,000. If you buy the keyboard for 300, you must put in 300. Okay? If you buy, let's say, the mobile for 20,000, you must put in 20,000. So, this is called